no matter the location. From OAK LA to LV, I'm a Raider. Raider Nation, what's going on? This Raiders mailbag is coming at you here at the Raiders Report. So, Michael Figgin, what up, man? Hey, Mitch, never miss a show. Appreciate you. Watch the Natty. Bama's Christian Barmore would be a great player to draft. Thoughts? Dude, I 100% agree. I, I've been watching a lot of film on Barmore, but, like, the more and more I watch him, there was a part of me that almost put him over Marvin Wilson as my number one DT. And honestly, man, I might put it as tied for one between Wilson and and Barmore. I mean, these right now are on my top DT prospects. I know the Raiders are heavily looking at the defensive line, especially in the draft. If the Raiders want to take Wilson or Barmore at pick number 17, some people might think that's a little bit of a reach, but I'm also going to be looking at need, and I'm also going to look at a guy who, to be honest with y'all, with Barmore, reminds me a lot of Quinn and Williams. Reminds me a lot of a young, raw defensive tackle who didn't play a lot of Bama because they have so much talent, and turns out, Guess what? Bama, they make some damn good players in the NFL. So, who's your favorite defensive tackle prospect? Go down in the comments section and let me know. When I first did the uh, defensive prospect video, I, I had Marvin Wilson as number one. I also threw out defensive edge rushers as well, like a guy like Quiddy Pay. But I don't like to say one game switch my total opinion, but he showed up bar more. So go down in the comments, let me know. Who's your favorite defensive tackle prospect? Next one's coming in. Super chat from Christopher. What up, brother? Mitch, thoughts on drafting Borland or Werner at 17? I'm actually not really sold on either of those guys. I know Werner's a all-around linebacker, if you will, who can do a lot of different things, but I don't really think that that's really going to be the way that the Raiders go. I'm looking more edge rushers, defensive tackle. Obviously, I just mentioned Wilson and Barmore. Why not a guy like Gregory Russo? I mean, maybe even a guy like Quiddy Pay. I mean, those are two edge rushers that I know the Raiders could definitely use. All right, Brody writes, Mitch, do you think adding Leonard Williams would increase Furl and Crossy's production? Maybe Klee could get to 8 to 10 sacks. I don't know if Klee's ever going to be an 8 to 10 sack guy because I actually think that he played a phenomenal season playing DT and also playing edge rusher. I mean, he was the best defensive tackle the Raiders had. I know Crosby led the team in sacks. Cleveland Furl was the best defensive tackle, best defensive lineman the Raiders had this year. But would Leonard Williams help? You're damn right he would. He would open up so much for this Raiders defense. He would give us even more versatility. All last offseason, the Raiders pledged, and I mean they pledged, versatility, versatility, versatility. Leonard Williams not only gives you a stud player up front, he gives you a lot of versatility as well. Now, if you, I got another favor to ask you guys. I know a lot of times I'm always like, hey, like the video, subscribe. But that's how we make this show grow. So this is a 100% free show, and once in a while, I ask you guys to help me out a little bit. So if you see your question, if you see your Super Chat featured on the show, I want you to share it on Facebook. Here's how you do that. You click the share button underneath the video. You click the Facebook icon, and then you click post to Facebook. The way that this show continues to grow, the way that I can continue to make free videos, even in the off season, is by y'all helping me out. One person can do something cool, but an entire nation of people, we're stronger together. Let's always remember that, not just in YouTube videos, but in life in general, especially after a crazy year like 2020. So help me out. Share this video on Facebook, y'all. I would definitely appreciate it. Super Chat coming in from Frank. What up? And do you see the Raiders possibly trading for defensive help like Quinn and Williams or just go with the draft? I mean, I wouldn't mind a player like Quinn and Williams. If you tell me right now if the Jets wanted a second-round pick for Quinn, I would do that in a heartbeat. To be honest, if they wanted a first-round pick for Quinn and Williams, I would give up the 17th overall pick for a player like Quinn and Williams. Whether... Y'all might disagree with me or not. The Raiders have sucked drafting recently over the last three years. I mean, they have, especially early on in the drafts. If it wasn't for some steals later on, like a, yeah, honestly, like a uh, Hunter Renfro, like a Max Crosby, we'd be looking at the Raiders drafting over the last three years like, yo, these guys have not done a good job. So would I trade for somebody like Williams? Hell yeah, I would. Let's go to Arlene Hallam. Arlene, are you my aunt? My mom's a twin. That's her twin's name. What about keeping Irving, David Irving? So I think one of the reasons why the Raiders brought in a player like David Irving and brought in a lot of these players like Malik Collins is because, well, they knew the system underneath Rod Marinelli. David Irving was good for like one game, then was not in football shape. I'm more concerned about guys like Vic Beasley, Tack McKinley over a guy like David Irving. Between you and me, I'm okay moving on from David. Let's go to a Super Chat coming in from Joshua De La Fuente. Hopefully I got that right. Draft another running back in the later rounds. We should look at Harris from Bama in the later rounds. Get our own two-headed beast. 
So I saw some dude tweet out that the Raiders should sign or should draft Najee Harris. Personally, the guy who tweeted that out, I personally think is an idiot. However, you're not going to get Najee Harris in the later rounds. He's probably going to be, if not the number one running back drafted, definitely top two. It's between him and Travis Etienne. He's not going out of the second round. And if the Raiders take any offensive players this year in the top three rounds, I'm going to go absolutely nuts. Do I agree that you could potentially look at a running back later on in the draft? Yeah. You want a guy later on? Maybe Trey Sermon, who ended up getting hurt in the national title game. But two-headed beast, uh, it's not going to be Najee Harris. I'm sorry. Now, uh, what I want you all to do is once in a while support our sponsors. So shout out to Panda Sups. And my man Morbot, who owns Panda Sups, is like diehard Raider fan. He was like, Mitch, I got a special code for you. I want you to get the Raider Nation hooked up. So code Gus, because the Raiders hired Gus Bradley to be the new DC. And that defense needs a real transformation. And you know what? If you're looking down and you're saying, my body needs a transformation, there's no better place to get started than Panda Sups. And we're hooking you up with 40% off. How do you get hooked up? Go to pandasups.com, use code GUS, and you can get their awesome protein, their fat burner, which I'm not kidding you, I just put in an order for like $400 for Panda Sup stuff. I'm, I am a proud, proud user of this stuff. I swear by it. It is unbelievable. And shout out to producer Sam. He tried some new tropics before the show. He was getting a little bit sleepy, and he's like, I was about to make some coffee. No. If you're not a coffee drinker, and especially for all you gamers out there, if you want something that's going to lock you in and, like, basically give you full fuel for your brain, that's nootropics. But their protein is probably my favorite products, minus the fat burner as well. The fruity cereal tastes just like the milk on the bottom of a Fruit Loops or Fruity Pebbles bowl. Their chocolate vanilla also slam dunk. Seriously, go to pandasups.com, use code GUS to save 40%. All right, let's get back into the game of uh, throws. Appreciate the question. Need an edge, Mish. What about Aziz Ojalari? So the edge rusher from Georgia, 6'3", 240 pounds. He can really get after the quarterback. He might be a round one type of pick. I don't know if the Raiders should take him at 17 overall. Now, he's probably built a little bit more for, I was going to say a 3-4, but honestly, I think he can do it all. I'm not going to say he reminds me of Von Miller because it's really hard to make that type of comparison. But he has a lot of athletic traits that you love to see in a linebacker that can also get after the quarterback. I think no matter where you put this guy, he's going to be able to succeed. He can really do it all. So if the Raiders want to go out and get him, if somehow he falls to like the Raiders' second-round pick, I would be all over it. So how about this? We asked you earlier who's your favorite defensive tackle prospect. Who's your favorite edge prospect? we got over 1,100 people watching us live right now. Who's your favorite edge prospect? Go down in the comment section and let me know. Super Chat, Peaches, Sherman could be good for us. We lack on-the-field leaders, and defense is definitely smart enough to play safety or go back to the corner if needed. Richard Sherman is a good player. However, I'm not going to pay him probably his final contract. It's going to be really high when there's other good, solid, young cornerbacks out there when he's coming off the worst year of his entire career. Let's go to Slaughterproof. Okay, last season's defense was the Legion of Doom. Doomed our chances of getting to the playoffs. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. That was one of the hardest teams to watch, man, because you would see them get a lead, and nobody trusted the defense, not even John Gruden. But Legion of Doom, that's a good one. Let's go to Victor Padillo. Yo, Mitch, why does Leonard Williams look like a hunkier Vince Beasley laugh out loud? Let's get A-Rob and Williams and get more D in the offseason or draft to shape up the trash D, then we good. If you could tell me the only two guys that we sign in free agency and use all our money are on Allen Robinson – and Leonard Williams, I might be a little bit disappointed, but I really wouldn't be because those are the top two guys on my board. As I say that, I'm, I'm sitting here lying to myself. I want Justin Simmons or Anthony Harris. Those are probably my top two guys at safety. But then, yes, Allen Robinson, Leonard Williams as well. If we want to just spend all our money on Justin Simmons, Allen Robinson, and Leonard Williams, I would do it in a heartbeat. But, yeah, we definitely need to fix up the defense. Let's go to Mr. Panda Express 420. I know what you do. <laughs> also, I love me some Rick and Morty. Hey, Mitch, I know we're bringing back Carr, but what happens to Mariota, and do we try to go after someone like Aaron Rodgers? No, in terms of Aaron Rodgers. If the Packers don't bring him back and extend him the MVP, they're idiotic. In terms of what's going to happen with Mariota, go back and watch my cap cuts video that I did where I had the Raiders probably moving on from Mariota. It's just way too much money to pay a backup quarterback. Now, if Mariota wants to restructure his contract where he makes like $4 million instead of $10 million plus incentives, 
I'd be on board for that. But I am curious to see what Mariota would look like with OTAs, with a preseason, with training camp. See if he can really pick up the John Gruden style of offense. But it also goes back to the Raiders where if you are going to keep Mariota for $10.1 million, you need to use him a little bit more. You need to use him in some creative situations where maybe Derek can't pick up that clutch first down or those first to goal situations. Bring in Mariota. Don't play him like Taysom Hill because he's not like Taysom Hill, but at least run him a few times a game. Let's go to this next super chat from Hugo Gomez. What up? Do you think Jacobs is a franchise running back? I sometimes feel like we should be more explosive. Elliott has 100 less rushing yards with 30 less carries. So how about this? Do I think Josh Jacobs is a running back one? Yes, I absolutely do. However, I would never give a running back a contract like the Cowboys gave Zeke because running back is a very easy position to be able to find new players. Do I love Josh Jacobs? Yes. Is he a top 10 running back? Absolutely. But if Josh Jacobs right now were to ask for Zeke type of money, I would say get rid of him. Don't want him. And when his contract runs out after his you know deals are done, which I believe is going to be in what, 2023? I'm probably going to sit here and say, no, don't give Josh Jacobs over $12, $13 million because running back time and time again has been a position in the NFL that you can find cheaper options, especially in the draft. Now, hopefully you all don't find cheaper options out there because there ain't none. Uh, here at the Raiders Report, our shows are 100% free, and we always try to interact with Raider Nation. I know there's a lot of questions that always get put on these shows, and I always promise you all that I do always check my DMs. It takes me a while, though. I mean, we get a lot, a lot of messages here, and I do take my time. I do try to answer you all, so please be patient. But if you ever want to talk Raiders, if you ever want to see what's going on in my life, and uh, if you have more questions, ask me always. Seriously, hit me up. Instagram, that's where I'm at, MitchellRens365. Another Super Chat coming in from Hero Fall Time. What up, dude? Would the Raiders have any interest in Christian Barmore? Yes, the Raiders absolutely would. Defensive tackle out of Alabama. Right now, it's probably tied with Marvin Wilson on my big board for DTs, and when you really look at his talent, when you look at what he did in the national championship game against Ohio State, this dude can play. He's a sophomore. Reminds me, honestly, a lot of Quinn and Williams where the only knocks on Quinn and Williams originally were, oh, he didn't get a lot of playing time. He wasn't that great. Quinn and goes back <clears throat> to college football and absolutely dominates. Like if Barmore comes out, he's probably going to be a late round one, early second round pick. He might have boosted his draft stock enough to go in round one after the championship game. If he decides to go back to Alabama, don't be surprised if he's a top 10 pick next year. Another super chat coming in from Gerardo Neary. Shout out to my brother, Ramon. Go get Watson. Uh, Deshaun Watson's not going to happen, y'all. I'm sorry. If he does end up getting traded, I think the most likely situation is probably a team like Miami at this point. The Raiders, they're committed to Derek Carr. You'd have to give up a lot for Deshaun Watson. I know some people got upset that players were liking a picture of Watson in a Raiders uniform. It's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Let players like pictures all they want. If you're the type of guy that gets upset about guys liking pictures, you got to take a real good look at yourself in the mirror and realize, man, your life must be pretty freaking miserable. Let's go to Dust OK. I doubt we get Leonard Williams. I think we would be an amazing addition, but if the Giants will most likely resign them, why would they not? He was a beast. It's not that Leonard Williams was a beast, right? They also have another guy, Dalvin Tomlinson, who's also a defensive tackle that they could potentially bring back. But for the Giants, <clears throat> you went 6-10. and 10, Sure, you were able to compete in the NFC East, but if Leonard Williams wants to make a lot of money, I don't know if the Giants are going to sit there and really be able to bring him back. Plus, maybe Leonard doesn't want to stay with the Giants because, I'm sorry, they're not going to be winning football games anytime soon. So I'm going to keep my fingers crossed. I'm going to hope Leonard wants to go back to the West Coast and get paid. The thing that y'all forgetting, players make a lot more money in Las Vegas than they would in New York. Taxes alone. If Leonard will sign, let's say, a four-year $20 million contract in New York compared to a four-year $20 million contract in Vegas, he probably ends up making about $10 million more just in taxes. That's something that y'all need to keep in mind. Let's go to Sal. What up, man? What's up? Uh, love the show. I would love if the Raiders would draft Jeremiah Wosu Koromora, so he's a edge slash linebacker from Notre Dame. He'd be a great dog backer for us. He would actually fit really well, and I think what uh, Gus Bradley's going to end up trying to do in that cover three style, because with that cover three style, you have three deep safeties, but then you got four guys up front that then puts a lot of pressure to have your linebackers to be able to cover a little bit well, also get after the quarterback. So we know we got Corey Littleton, we know we got Nick Wachowski. Those are two solid guys. Also, shout out to Corey Littleton, who also played a lot better once Rod Marinelli became defensive coordinator. I think it was just too much to handle. 
to the Paul Gunther style defense, but I love Owosu Koromora. He's an absolute stud. I just don't know if the Raiders are really going to take him at pick number 17. We'll see, but I know for a fact he's not going to be there in round two. Let's go to another super chat from Zornell. It's my guy right here. If CF can't get 8 to 10 as an average, so I believe you mean Cleveland Furl, he's a bust. Trade him right away. What are you going to trade him for? I'm not trading Cleveland Furl because do I think that when you draft somebody in the top four at defensive entry, they get 8 to 10 sacks? 8 to 10 sacks really is not that easy. But I'm not going to trade our best defensive lineman, so, and I'm not going to call him a bust because he was good this year. He was a top 20 defensive end. He was very good against the run. And sometimes <clears throat> the thing that Klee gets ripped on for, and it honestly pisses me off, is he's not the guy that puts up all these stats. But you know what? He does the dirty work. You want a comparison? He's like the Dennis Rodman of the Raiders where he gets the rebounds. He gets the steals. He's a tough defender. He might not put up the points like Jordan. He might not put up the points like Pippen. But he does the dirty work, and that's why I respect the hell out of Cleveland Furl. So, no, I ain't trading him. All right, let's go to, okay, Super Chat. Mac Jones, the Green Bay drafted love when they got were paying Mariota. We get Wilson in the second round. I say move back and get more draft picks. So, I like Mac Jones a lot. Solid quarterback. I think he actually just boosted his draft stock. Probably going to go in the round and in round one after. He broke the national championship record for most passing yards in the game. I mean, he was outstanding. 464 yards, five touchdowns, no interceptions. If he wouldn't have lost Devonta Smith, shit, he might have put up 500 passing yards. The only issue I always have with quarterbacks from Alabama is this. Breaking news, Alabama is really freaking talented. And some of these plays that Mac Jones has, I don't want to be that guy. I honestly think that you and I could make a lot of those passes. Remember when we go back to talking about Tua and him being absolutely phenomenal? Maybe Tua was really good because he had Henry Ruggs, Devonta Smith, Jalen Waddell, and Jerry Judy. Mac Jones is a fun quarterback, but the Raiders, I do not anticipate them drafting anyone. 